Hey, peeps and fellow explorers, Galusier here with another episode of my Let's Play No Man's Sky. So, I'm basically picking up where I left off. I just went to go gather a bunch of materials so I can make my battery, which is slowly charging now. And we need to go to the space station and start to progress this. And normally, I wouldn't burden you with just my random goings-ons at a space station. There's a lot of tedious, a lot of tedious tasks involved with uh, randomly going to the space station. But I actually wanted to involve you guys because number one is the first trip there, so obviously that's a little bit more significant. But also because I have several different things that I like to do that are you know pretty specific to the space station and like what I feel is like important like things that are important to do when you're there I can't go over all of it now because some of it is like things that frankly like I just I'm not ready to do yet like because we're still just you know getting started and whatnot but there's some things that you're going to want to do basically at every space station that you can start doing right away from the beginning and I feel like it's pretty important to tackle those things like right off the bat if possible so now that we're here uh, the first thing is actually it's kind of silly but I haven't actually uploaded any of my quote unquote discoveries yet and uh, that can actually be kind of important to do because you get nanites for it. There you go. So we got 141 extra nanites for doing that. So definitely worth doing. So to start out, I'm going to sell off anything that's not needed. Let's get let's generate some monies and we need to talk to as many life forms as possible. First, just to finish the tutorial, we're going to ask people about the mysterious signal. But then the other reason is because it helps us with language. So there's no reason not to. Okay. So we finished with our first major batch of selling. We're up to 372,000 units now. It's actually not a terrible start. We're probably going to get some milestones now for money. And then I'm going to start talking to people. Okay. So, we're done with the whole 16 part. Now it's just like, hey, you should talk to people and do things. And again, this is how the game does a pretty good job of using a tutorial to kind of just feed into it. So, yeah, I will be talking to various people because we definitely want to increase our knowledge of language obviously I'll cut all that stuff out but here there's a few things that you want to do always and the first thing is you want to walk up to this area on every space station you're gonna have this exosuit modular thing and it will allow you to upgrade one at a slot to either your general technology or cargo slot I'm gonna start with technology because I'm hoping to add a technology, first of all. But secondly, like, I already have technology in the general slot, which I try to keep in the technology slot. So, yeah, I'm going to add a technology slot, hoping to um, be able to fit more into there. But I'm definitely curious what kind of technologies this guy has. I think with my current amount of nanites, I can only afford a class B. I don't know that I could afford a class A. Obviously not an S. We're not even close. Yeah, or an A. But we are close to an A. He does have a, a class A movement module, and we are close. So I may actually... God, he's got an S, too. I'm just going to save it for now. I'm going to save it, because we're going to be able to get a lot of nanites here shortly. So. so then the next thing that you could do, since this is our first time here is the appearance modifier. This is when you could first really start to fix your appearance, if you will, and 
you know, just change how you look. There's a lot of different crazy looks that you can go for. I actually, I usually, this is what I usually actually go as. I like the weird cat alien looking thing. And I actually really like these colors, like purple and it's more of a teal, but purple and green are my favorite color combos. So I kind of like that. I wonder if I can adjust this color though. Yeah, see that's better. I like that more. Okay, I'm a cat thingy now. I'm not going to go into great detail about the whole affecting the market thing yet. Uh, but I am going to see what this market has, first of all. So cobalt and oxygen are always available in every market. But there's going to be some things that are like specific. So ammonia, that's actually good that it has ammonia. Oh my god, I'm in a system with ionized cobalt. That is insanely useful. That's super useful. Okay, cool. So, first thing I'm going to point out. So, right now, the demand for oxygen is slightly down. It's negative 2.8%, right? So, what I do is I grab all of my oxygen and I sell it. So, right now, we're at 371.588. And I only have 292 oxygen. Okay. Boom. I just sold all my oxygen. So then I can go in here to buy oxygen, and you can see that now the demand is slightly worse because I sold some oxygen, right? So now the demand is slightly less, making it cheaper to buy. What you eventually want to do, the goal, is you want to have so much of a certain thing. In this case, oxygen and cobalt. That's what I focus on. You want to have so much of it that when you sell it, you crash the market. Just It plummets like negative 80%. And then you can buy everything back, but somehow make money in the process. So I don't have a ton of money yet, so I'm not going to buy all of this. But let's say I want to basically like double up on what I had. I had 292, so let's say I want to buy 539. I could do that and barely affect my monies, right? I went from 371 to like 359, but... Uh, I have way more oxygen now because of it. And then the next system I go to, I'll have even more oxygen and I'll actually be able to have an effect on the market. And you just kind of build on that and you just keep doing that. Like you just keep, once I get more money, I'll be able to do, the, I'll just be, I'll buy all the oxygen. I'll buy all of it. My spaceship will literally be full of nothing but oxygen and cobalt. And then you just destroy the local market. And that's kind of like, in a nutshell, my money strategy. Oh, that's actually shockingly close. Good. Okay. How are we doing on the battery? Uh, terrible. Wow. Okay. Well, it's storing back up now. Obviously, we're going to need more than one solar panel to really get this going. But and I could fly over there, being that it's 2,000 units away. But I kind of want to go on a little bit of a journey. So let me... I have a ton of open slots in the ship, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dump my inventory into the ship. Well, one thing I'll say about this planet, like earlier I needed to get ferrite so I can make that battery because I needed to make magnetized ferrite. Not a lot of ferrite. Like these huge boulders giving you a shockingly small amount and they're few and far between. So it was actually kind of a challenge. So that's one thing I don't like about this planet is the lack of ferrite. Oh, okay. There's a giant crashed freighter, which is obviously our point of destination. That's where we're actually going. That's good because there's actually... Oh, another talky talky rock. There's some good things that we can get from a crashed freighter. So this is the part that we get to skip because we had the hyperdrive from the pre-ordered ship already. So this is normally the part of the tutorial where it teaches you how to make a hyperdrive. And we just totally skipped that, right? So that's obviously helpful. Um, 
But now before we return to the ship, we want to find these cargo pods. So these cargo pods can be found in wrecked freighters like this. And they bring with them loads of money potentials because they can have all sorts of good stuff inside of them. But they're also super dangerous and it can be kind of tricky to mess with them. So why can't I see... like below here. Oh, there's a door there. Okay, there we go. Okay, well, there we go. I was going to say the damaged door is in my way. So this is the container. There we go. Okay, so this is important. I can't stress this enough. When you go to open these, you have to have a clear path out make sure you can very quickly leave that is super important and i will show you why in a second okay so it wants oh, of course it wants something that i don't have okay let's get out of the hole for a second there was a thing here to call a ship Let's go see if we can do that. Because I have chromatic metal in my ship. I need a navigation thing. That's annoying. Whatever. Okay, so we repair this. And now we run away. Screaming. Ah. See how quickly... Look at, the look at the radiation damage I took. Halfway down on the shield. That quickly. As soon as you open it. It starts spewing out radiation. So that's why it's important to have a an exit strategy. Okay, so we got that one. So we're, I'm just going to go around finding all these cargo pods. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so first things first. We are going to go in here and do the thing we're actually supposed to do. And then we'll do the crazy stuff or not. Actually, before I do that, let's explore the rest of this building really quick. Hello. But at least once we learn the recipe, it automatically fulfills. Like, we don't actually have to make it yet. That part's automatic. But anyway, so now we are going to do our first... Galactic jump. Okay, so we want to go here. 80 light years away. That is a really big planet. <laughs> oh, we're like right there. It's a f oh, well there you go. It's an icy planet. Finally, we get to use our ice shield. So, obviously we need to go there for the quote-unquote fuel source, but first thing you always do with almost no exception when you get to a new system is you go to the space station. For innumerous reasons. First of all, we can immediately expand our storage, like I pointed out earlier. Uh, if we have stuff to sell, we can get rid of it. Um, we can, you know, do the whole buy sell thing for cobalt or oxygen or whatever we happen to have on us. We can 
talk to a bunch of people and gain better language knowledge before we move on to the next step. Like, there's all sorts of stuff. But the main thing is adding a storage slot for our exosuit and selling anything that we can to clear out the available space so that it's a little we do we can pick up more stuff you know in our journeys and whatnot okay so 432 is not bad we can get a classes now obviously i'd like to save up for an s class but i would also like to not not be able to move these movement things are really hit or miss though i've bought them before and it literally just like gives you additional life support space which technically helps for movement because it uses life support but it's really hit or miss i'm gonna go for it though i'm just gonna take the chance it'll get us a good start on things so let's readjust some stuff here so we're going to For now, we're going to have to move that back to here. And install that. Wow, that's actually really good. It's a huge improvement to the jetpack tanks. And then sprint recovery time, recharge rate, sprint distance. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm really glad I got that. That is a huge, huge improvement. Very, very happy with that. Totally worth the nanites. Glad I didn't wait for an, uh, an S class. Oh, yeah. Look at all that tank size. Oh, my God. We are going to have so much mobility now. Interesting. There's like bubbles everywhere. Oh, there's humming sacks. There's like bubbles everywhere. Dude. I've never seen anything like this. This is bizarre. It's just, there's just bubbles everywhere. Like, how weird. <laughs> this game, this is what I'm talking about. This game never ceases to amaze me. It's always doing something different. Like at no point did I know or even think that there was something in this game where you could just randomly get to a planet covered in bubbles. Okay. Well, we got our warp cell. So this is kind of like what I've been rushing towards. Like, I want to start this... This line of stuff I want to I want to talk to the stranger I want to I want to do all this stuff this opens up a whole lot a whole lot of stuff for the game it, this is what is gonna potentially give us another ship massively expand our base give us way more capability it opens up a lot to so this this line that I can currently do is important and it's worth noting that if you're playing the game, when you get the warp cell that I just got, do not immediately install it in your ship because you may end up deciding to replace your ship with the stranger's ship. And if you do, you're gonna need the warp cell. So don't waste it on the Crystal Folly or if you have the other starter ship. Now, the stranger ship is not a consistent thing though like everything else it's randomly generated so it's hit or miss like if you don't have the crystal folly if you have the normal starting ship it's more likely oh god we got gypped i can already tell you you're it's more likely to be a better replacement but the crystal folly is a pretty good ship so i mean there's a decent chance that you won't want to replace it and you know i've actually only replaced the crystal folly once with the stranger's ship because it was although it was class c it was um it had like 32 slots it was like massive why can i not scan you it was super massive and although it's damaged you have to 
whoa, hello. You have to repair those slots. Um, it was still totally worth it. So to me, like, you know, it was worth it to replace the Crystal Folly. But it, it's, it's hit or miss. Nice. The advanced mining laser. That's actually, that's obviously, that's a big deal. The advanced mining laser is going to vastly open us up. Okay. Um, oh, well, they're on the other side of the hill. I can't see them. Oh, I can see those. A lot of life on this one. Okay, so we're going to check out his ship. I mean, it, it doesn't look great, but you never know. Looks can be deceiving. I mean, it's class B, so that's a big deal. That definitely helps, but it's tough. I mean, obviously, the damage potential is way less. Um, the hyperdrive slightly better, but the damage potential is way less. Um, it's potentially up to 18 slots, but right now it's only nine, right? A lot of slots have to be repaired. And... Um, it's only got four technology slots. I mean, come on. So what you can do, though... So I can claim the ship. That There's no disadvantage to doing that. Okay? Claim the ship. Uh, because it's free. So you may as well. But don't get in it and start using it. I think I'm going to have to use my... Uh, I don't think I have a lot of dioxide. Because I've just been getting it as a extra thing from rocks. But I think I'm going to have to use it for my ice shields here. Because I am starting to do a little bit of exploration, so I'm not right next to where my ship's at. How much? Uh, it's only 300. If I went straight to my ship, I would be fine. However, buried technology module. So I'm going to recharge my shield. I do have an ion battery. I could use that, but it's actually really inexpensive to charge. I'm actually super surprised. Maybe that's part of the benefit of like a higher level. Oh, shit. Man, I gotta pay more attention to that. I just keep not noticing it. Um, but yeah, maybe that's some of the benefit of... Like when you get like an S class or something like that shield, as opposed to like an A class. It's like cheaper to recharge. I Honestly, I don't know the benefits of like one versus the other. I assume they last longer or whatever, but I've never like hardcore looked into it. It's easy to see what the advantages are of a higher level, you know, like movement mod, for example, you can see the stats, but it's not as crystal clear with uh, shields. It's actually a ton of these crab things, and they all seem to be in the sky, so I'm just going to say that the game meant to do that, which is really weird. <laughs> this game is so bizarre sometimes. Holy crap. Class A Hypertrive module? That's insane. Oh, yeah. I can install my Hyperdrive. Holy shit. Let me make sure I have a space for it. I do. Excellent. Let me... Let's, first of all, do this. Booyah. And then let's install this bad boy. Okay. Warp cell efficiency, 100%. That's awesome. And then 172 additional light years. That's like more than double what our current distance was. I mean, look at the hyperdrive rating. It went from like 101 to 281. Like huge, huge jump forward. So that's awesome. Okay. So we're just going to go back to space and then see what happens. We might get, like, another message from him or something. Yay! Okay, so this is a big deal. This is... the home for the anomaly. Which, more importantly, is, like, a player hub. So, it's... Like, where you can meet up with friends and start missions and stuff. And it opens up 
a ton of things and various activities and stuff. So I think I'm actually going to, we're going to go on a tour because I really want to explain some things about this place. And then um, I'll wrap it up here today because this is going to take a little bit of time. But everyone with a white dot above them, like this is a player. That's a actual player. So that's, this is the first time that you're, if you're playing in a quote unquote single player mode or whatever, this will be the first time that you're actually seeing oh, as a cool ship. Uh, this is the first time that you're going to be seeing uh, actual players. So that's fun. But there's a ton of stuff that we can do here. So we're just going to get to it. So the first... I'm stuck. First thing I always do is I go straight to Helios. I'll show you why. Helios is a huge fan of information. So right now he wants flora data, for example. So all the flora that we've found so far, he's going to give us nanites for the information. 90 nanites. Literally did nothing except talk to this guy. And um, as time goes on, you can give them more stuff. So like uh, next time that I'm playing this game, I'll come back and see him. And instead of flora, he'll ask me for information about fauna, for example, or whatever. And so it'll, you know keep going and then there's Aries and Aries is a big fan of milestones so every time that you have a milestone for talking to aliens or earning a certain amount of money or walking a certain distance whatever he's gonna help us out and give us nanites for that and then look how much we <laughs> a thousand fifty nanites so it's a giant colossal leap forward in nanites and obviously that means that we're going to be able to buy some good upgrades so I'm going to do the actual quest I'm going to talk to the people I'm supposed to talk to so the gist of it is this like player hub place is all about Nada which is this person and Polo which is this person here and everyone else basically hates this place <laughs> that's the gist of it i'm giving you the gist of it so just like on the space stations where you can upgrade your exosuit this has a thing to upgrade your exosuit as well but the weird thing about it is this thing travels everywhere so it should be the same but it's not so you you eventually unlock the ability to summon this weird place you need to do this every time you go to a new system so that you can upgrade your exosuit speaking of which all of these guys have something that can be unlocked which is nice and it's straight up you know you're just you're spending nanites but unlike the other guys where it's a gamble we know exactly what these guys are selling us. So, for example, the hazmat gauntlet. We need that to be able to pick stuff up. It's something that I unlock pretty much immediately. It's pretty easy to make. It's important to have. But you can see, like, it tells us what it's giving us, which is super helpful. See, I like this. So, like, we're getting... Rocket boots, that's giving us the advanced jump systems. It's it's uh that would be a huge boost to our mobility. This gives us the efficient water jets so that we can move around better underwater, which is also super helpful. You can see that this is a minor upgrade, which I'm not super needed, but this I do really want. I need this to get this. This dramatically increases your uh travel distance i guess while we're here we'll spend some salvage data we can start unlocking rooms we really need to to do what we want to do so let's do let's get the cylindrical room unlocked that's like a super basic room that we need for virtually anything okay so for the starship upgrades there's a few things in here that i like to get pretty quickly uh the economy scanner is really good you can get a 
good heads up on a system before you go there and find out what's up with it. These uh, drive upgrades are nice. This one isn't bad, uh, but this is the pulse drive power is something that I'm a really big fan of. And then the other thing, see if I can find, oh, the all these drives, not a bad thing to get. It's uh, the cadmium drive, the emerald drive, and the indium drive. You need those if you're going to go to any of those systems. There's certain systems that you can only go to if you have these drives. So eventually you're obviously gonna want those. This is what I was actually looking for though. So this isn't bad, negative 20% for the launch cost. So you're, you don't have to worry about fuel as much, but once you get this, you never have to buy fuel again, literally ever. So this just automatically recharges your launch fuel and you'll never have to worry about it again. So that's something that I personally like to get pretty quickly. I like to kind of rush, rush that. So I always do Artemis first. So the, when you ask for help with something, like you're basically choosing what quest you want to do more or less, right? And the Artemis quest line is pretty much all about your base. It's going to give you a ton of stuff, a ton of stuff unlocked for your base. And I'm all about it. Like I really want to expand my base. Having a good base of operation is uh, really important for like expanding your abilities. So, so yeah, the space, this, uh, the station's really cool. Obviously there's a ton of benefits to it. Um, we bought a lot of stuff. We still have over a thousand nanites, but yeah, if you've got some friends that are playing this game, uh, or if you don't and you want to talk them into it, it's worth it. I mean, you get to so this thing here, you can trigger, uh, quests to do, that are like group quests, they're tons of fun. It unlocks uh, a totally new currency, Quicksilver, that you take to this guy and spend on like crazy looking cosmetics and stuff. And it's, but the, the quests themselves are a lot of fun. If you don't have any friends that are playing it though, you can see all these people standing around and a lot of them, they just kind of stand here waiting for people to link up with. And it shouldn't be that hard to find some people to play with. So have at it. But I'm gonna fly out to space, get the next kind of you know, thing, figure out like what it is that we need to do. And then wrap up today's episode. So that was fun. I'm glad we got to go in there and see that. Uh, it's definitely a very useful place to go to. Okay, cool. So we have to go back to our base terminal anyway to do this mission. So that's helpful. I'm going to go to the space station to sell some crap. And I'll just teleport back. You do not have to hyper jump back to your space station. Remember that, or to your base. Remember that you can uh, teleport. But yeah, I want to get some quick stuff done. I'm gonna buy some like wiring looms and things like that so I can do the advanced mining laser and some other crap and then that's it yeah like i said i'm gonna wrap it up for today so thanks everybody for coming out hopefully you're enjoying this version of let's play where we're doing uh no man's sky i'm having a ton of fun playing it so hopefully you're having fun watching it but yeah so i will uh next episode i i'm gonna try to just like focus on the artemis line and rush through it. We'll obviously be doing a little bit of exploration and stuff while we're at it, but I'm just gonna be pushing that as fast as I can. So uh, we'll get through that together. Thanks again, everybody. And I will see you next time.